If you've been told that the real threat to your job is AI, then congratulations, you've been sold the Silicon Valley equivalent of a magician distracting you with a white rabbit while his other hand empties your wallet. Because while AI is busy writing bad poetry and generating blurry pictures of dogs that look like lawyers, robots, the literal metal skeletons with claws, are quietly marching into every factory, warehouse, and drive through window like the most polite union-busting army in history. But first, let's go back a bit here to the first robot, the first industrial robot, the Unimate was installed in a General Motors factory in 1961. This thing looked like a cross between a tank turret and an overeager hydraulic arm. It welded car parts with precision that no human worker could ever match, unless the human worker was part machine and also completely fine with inhaling molten metal fumes eight hours a day. By 1980, there were about 4,000 industrial robots in the United States. Today, four million, with most of them coming in the last 10 to 15 years. And here's the thing. It didn't stop with assembly lines. No, 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 no. Robots got ideas. They looked at the factory floor and said, cool, but what if we also can take over logistics, agriculture, food service, and oh, why not surgery too? Yes, surgery. I mean, in 2000, the FDA approved the Da Vinci surgical system, which has since carried out over 12 million surgical operations. So while your doctor was earning a quarter million dollars in medical school debt, a robot was patiently waiting in the corner like, thanks for warming up my seat. I got this, Todd. Fast forward to the 2010s and you've got Amazon deploying robotic armies in warehouses. After acquiring Kaiva Systems in 2012 for a measly $775 million. Those orange Roomba on steroids units now number over 750,000 in Amazon's warehouses. That means if Amazon's robots formed a city, they would be larger than that of Boston. Imagine Boston, but instead of Red Sox fans yelling at you, it's just endless orange robots silently plotting how to deliver your emergency Funko Pop order faster than ever before. But manufacturing and warehouses were just the appetizer because the entree came when robots started wandering into places we never expected. McDonald's tested burger flipping robots as early as 2017. By the 2020s, Miso Robotics, Flippy could handle grills and fryers at dozens of fast food joints. Nothing says dystopia like realizing that the poor teenager who used to undercook your fries has been replaced by a stainless steel arm that will never text on the job, never call in sick, and never ever forget salt on your nuggets. Meanwhile, in agriculture, robots are literally milking cows. I mean, Lili, the Dutch company, launched automated milking systems that by 2022 were being used on over 35,000 farms around the world. I mean, you can picture it, cows lining up for a machine to handle the job instead of a farmer. It's essentially like a cow sex robot economy, and somehow we're all supposed to just clap and be okay with farmers losing their jobs. And then there's Boston Dynamics, the company that started out making weirdly adorable robot dogs and then decided, what if we gave them handles, wheels, and the ability to do parkour? By 2020, their videos of humanoid robots doing backflips went viral. And you may have laughed, but deep down, you're probably thinking this, like I was, that thing's probably gonna take over the world one day. And this is not just an American problem, I mean, this is everywhere around the world. I mean, in South Korea, the government began heavily subsidizing robotics in the 2000s. By 2019, the country had over 900 robots for every 10,000 workers, the highest robot density in the entire world. And the numbers don't stop. I mean, in 2021, the International Federation of Robotics reported that global spending on robotics hit $43.5 billion that year. Last year, it actually surpassed $60 billion annually. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, the great robotic explosion, everything's going great. Wages have actually declined in most of the world, at least real median wages. So while robots are getting shinier, stronger, and creepier, human workers are desperately hoping their bosses will approve casual Fridays and a minor pay increase. But the stuff that's been happening, especially over the last year, has been quite alarming. Amazon announced that it had crossed 1 million active warehouse robots. That's a million orange automatons hauling boxes faster than any human ever could. And unlike humans, they don't need bathroom breaks or try to form unions, you know, those pesky unions. This milestone was treated by Jeff Bezos with the same enthusiasm most people reserve for getting a free Starbucks upgrade. And Amazon, even though it's kind of the biggest example of this, they aren't the only example. 
Walmart, DHL, and FedEx have rolled out fleets of robotic pickers and autonomous forklifts. By mid-2025, U.S. logistics firms were reporting double-digit productivity gains, which sounds great until you realize it's paired with tens of thousands of jobs that are not getting created. Essentially, all of these productivity gains are just going to the rich, the powerful, the shareholders, the stock prices, and so on. I mean, just for Amazon's numbers, you could argue that one human in eight hours work could do about the same amount of work as one of those robots over 24 hours. And if that were to be the case, if those numbers are roughly correct, we are talking, again, one million jobs that do not exist. Those jobs could have gone to a lot of other young people, a lot of middle class people, but nope, they are going to the corporate overlords. So what's also happened this year? I mean, Miso Robotics, Flippy 2, because obviously they wouldn't stop at Flippy 1, they gotta make a Flippy 2. Well, they announced that they're getting into 100 locations of White Castle in the United States this year. Chipotle added autonomous tortilla chip makers to dozens of kitchens, because apparently the thought of a minimum wage worker scooping salt was too extravagant to tolerate. Now these machines are now cranking out fries and chips at rates that would make even Gordon Ramsay say, ah, oh, calm down, it's just potatoes, let's relax here guys, let's relax. Now by spring 2025, the National Restaurant Association reported that one in five fast food chains were testing robotic kitchen staff, and that number will only grow over time. Meanwhile, agriculture has gone from Old MacDonald had a farm to Old MacDonald outsourced it to a fleet of drones. In California, strawberry farms are deploying robotic harvesters capable of picking 25 acres of strawberries a day. Farmers boast that these machines work through the night, never complain, and don't unionize, which when you say it out loud, makes you sound less like a farmer and more like a villain from a dystopian Netflix series. I mean, by mid-2025, the US Department of Agriculture noted that robotic farm equipment adoption jumped to 40% year over year, driven by allegedly labor shortages and rising costs. The result of this is cheaper strawberries, fewer jobs, and one more step toward a future where your salad is brought to you by Skynet. And nothing ever went wrong with Skynet. Now another thing is healthcare. I mean, we briefly touched on this, but hospitals strapped for nurses and aides have leaned harder into robotics. In Japan and South Korea, robotic caregivers are practically roommates at this point. I mean, just last year, 1.2 million operations were performed by robotic surgical assistants. And that number will be even higher this year. Robotic hospital delivery carts now shuttle medication and linens through corridors like ghostly butlers. And also, just in general, corporations right now, they are just drooling over the possibilities. I mean, Tesla's Optimus humanoid robot, which Elon Musk teased as a general purpose worker, started pilot programs in Tesla factories in 2025. Videos of Optimus folding shirts, walking boxes, and most terrifyingly, slowly learning to use tools well, all those videos have been circulating this year. Musk boasted in March that Optimus could replace two human workers at half the cost. And in fact, a lot of nations right now are competing more in a robotics race than a space race or an artificial intelligence race. I mean, China unveiled a plan to become the world's robotic superpower by 2030, deploying over 400,000 new industrial robots every single year. Germany, always efficient, doubled subsidies for factories adopting automation this year, cementing its place as the EU robot overlord. And again, countries all around the world, including the US, are all trying to find ways to rapidly adopt automation. Now, what does this mean for the workers? Well, nothing. Nothing good. <laughs> A 2025 report by the World Economic Forum estimated that robots could be displacing 85 million jobs worldwide by 2030. But that number, it's kind of looking conservative right now. I mean, in the US, warehouse employment fell by 7% in the first half of 2025, which is the steepest decline since the peak of the Great Recession. Fast food reported over 200,000 fewer frontline workers this year compared to pre-pandemic levels, and part of that is thanks to automation. And unlike AI software, which mostly threatens a lot of creatives and middle managers, robots are physically yanking jobs out of the hands of working and middle-class people. In June of 2025, the robotics ETF RoboGlobal hit record highs, outpacing even AI-driven tech funds. Wall Street doesn't see robots as a threat, they see them as a primary money printer, in a sense. Because for investors, every pink slip that is handed out to a worker is another champagne cork popping at a shareholder's meeting. 
The future of robotics isn't just some Jetsons cartoon where Rosie the robot politely vacuums your house while cracking jokes. It's gonna look more like a Black Mirror episode, let's be honest. Because if the robotic trajectory of 2025 keeps accelerating, then eventually within a few decades, most advanced economies won't have a single laborer job, no physical workers. I mean, Goldman Sachs has their estimate of about 300 million full-time jobs will be lost globally in the next couple decades thanks solely to robotics. And that's almost the entire population of the United States being told, thank you for your service, please hand over your badge to uh, Optimus Prime. He's gonna take your job now. And again, these won't stop at warehouses or factories. Robotics are, they're gonna come for everything. They will drive your Ubers, they will clean your hotel rooms, deliver your groceries, flip your burgers, and maybe even teach your kids math. Although if a humanoid robot can teach algebra without losing patience, it already deserves sainthood, let's be honest. Autonomous delivery robots are expected to dominate urban logistics. I mean, with estimates that one in every three last mile deliveries will be done by machines by 2032. I mean, we are not too far away from literal drones dropping off packages at your house. House. What did I say house for? Everyone at this point is going to be living in a cardboard box, but that's a separate issue. Because if robots claim more of the blue collar and service jobs, then what happens to the entire community and the entire middle class and the entire lower class? The inequality that this is going to create will be staggering. McKinsey estimated that automation could add $13 trillion globally to the GDP by 2030 but the distribution of that wealth will look like a pie chart drawn by a sociopath. The top slice, CEOs, shareholders, tech moguls, they'll get virtually 90% or more of those gains. The rest of us will be fighting over the crumbs, literally, because by then, even the crumbs will be picked up by robotic vacuums. By 2040, economists warn that wealth concentration will surpass Gilded Age levels where peasants will struggle to get by, and robots serving caviar to billionaires will be everywhere. And some governments, they are for this, and some are panicking. Some nations are talking about robot taxes, forcing companies to pay into social safety nets for every human worker that gets replaced by a machine. South Korea, essentially the robot capital of the world right now, actually implemented a version of this in 2017, scaling back corporate tax breaks for automation. In the EU, debates about a universal basic income have roared back into the spotlight because when 30% of your citizens no longer have jobs, handing out checks suddenly seems less radical and more like an act of survival. But imagine the politics of that in America. A Congress that can barely agree on what day of the week it is now has to debate sending out robot relief checks. That hearing is gonna look like a clown car on fire, guys. And then there's the cultural impact. Because work isn't always just about the money. I mean, for better or worse, jobs give people identity, purpose, a reason to get up in the morning. What happens when millions of people lose that to the machines? Do people lean into art, community, leisure? Or do we get a society of angry, depressed, jobless people screaming on TikTok about how a burger flipping robot stole their destiny? Based on recent history, it feels like the second option is probably gonna be the one. And with the combination of robotics and AI potentially getting fused into one, we're talking about a future where humans might actually be less efficient at everything, all jobs, even creative ones. I mean, the terrifying irony is that we've all been distracted just by ChatGPT, while the real threat, the real existential threat is a combination of robotics and AI. People write op-eds about ChatGPT replacing journalists, but GPT doesn't weld cars, harvest lettuce, or staff a warehouse. Robots do. And when they do, the ripples hit the very backbone of the middle class. The future we're walking into is one where corporations will save trillions of dollars, governments scramble for band-aid policies, and society fractures into those who own the robots and those who are replaced by them. Now, if you enjoyed this video, hopefully you did, make sure to check out my documentaries playlist. Uh, click on that playlist and I'll see you guys in my next video in just a few seconds.